As I indicated on my news release, on June 12th, 2020, Governor uh, Cuomo signed Executive Order 203, requiring each local government in New York State that has a police agency uh, to uh, adopt policing reform plan by April 21st, 2021. And it's a lot of it's just to uh, try to rebuild the community's trust with the police departments and uh, you know talk with the residents talk with the stakeholders and try to find have an open dialogue to find out how we can come together okay come up with a plan now let me ask you this um, have you already started this process or is this the first like community so this reach the, out this is gonna be the first community forum okay. um, I have talked with people in the community I've checked our, our our records, stats, if you want to call it, to uh, um, come up with a forum, this presentation that I'll be presenting. It gives a whole uh, understanding of the police department. I want, I really would like the residents to realize what we have here. I'm covering the everything from the history of the police department right down to. Um, our strategies and it's a lot of the uh, a lot of the residents it's something that they already know but it's uh, it's just to give them a good idea um, Homer's always been a community police department a lot of the residents know the officers by on a first name basis and they know their residents and that's just the way it's always been here we're very embedded or uh, tight with the community okay um well, by with the fact that you just have done you know that you spoke out you said you spoke with different people um like what kind of things did you hear like do you have any examples that you can share i've talked with you know a lot of the uh the residents about this and it's it's you know they for better words they love their police department Mm -hmm. They love what we do. They love what we, uh, the service that we provide, and they like the fact that that it's an open police department where they can come in here and they can talk to us anytime they want. It's an open dialogue. Understand? Let me ask you this: with every type of business that there is, obviously, everything can always improve. What are maybe like one or two things that you would like to maybe? see improve or some things that you'd love to do more of maybe that aren't happening now well i'd like to meet with the public more i mean i've i did the coffee with a cop um in october i did coffee <coughs> excuse me coffee with a chief um on small business saturday i planned on you know trying to make myself more available to the public you know, like an organized, you know, I'll be here at this certain time every, try to organize it every uh, month at a certain time. I mean, because it's important that people come and they, they talk to their chief to discuss any issues or just even to say hi to us. I make myself available a lot of community events. People will see me like Winterfest. It's not just make an appearance. I go in and walk around the, the events. Um, you saw me uh, at uh, the Memorial Day event, I made myself available. The uh, Homer Field Days, the Farm and Field Days, as well as Magic on Main, and even Homecoming over here. It's uh, not just myself, the officers. Great. Um, now with this event on February 15th, if community members have questions or yeah, so, so things we'll like that, how can they how can they submit that or will they be able to ask in real time? So from my understanding, we're trying to set it up as a Zoom meeting. Okay. And, you know, I'll do my presentation and then at the end we'll have a question and answer. And then I will basically sign off and the mayor and some of the trustees will stay on the Zoom meeting because there may be questions that, that people are afraid to ask with me on there, and I understand. And they can ask the mayor, they can ask the trustees, 
and they can have their open dialogue with with the uh, with the village representatives. Now, a question I have for you: If let's say let's make this up, let's say if you were on for the first half hour, first hour, and then you get off, and there are certain questions um, that are asked, um, how will those answers if the mayor or the different members don't so, have it. Would you do another release to so if they file wanted, that up? So I'll still be, I'll still be available. They may ask me to to sign back on, mm -hmm. so that I can answer those questions. Understood. So, yeah, because Zoom nowadays has something called a breakout room. Essentially, they yeah. could basically have you go to that. And I think you, I think you figured out how, uh, how <laughs> technical, uh, technical, technological advanced that I am. Mm -hmm. Going through my emails the other day. So, yeah. <laughs> That's what we'll do. What we'll do. I'll go into a break room and and uh, come back. Uh, are there any other um, things that you might want to say to the community or uh, well, a message to encourage them to be involved or anything like that? So how to contact you? I'm actually look. I'm actually looking forward to this. I mean, this is something that it's not new to me. At my previous agency that I worked, I met with a Rotary Club. And I went through what the sheriff's office had to offer. And a lot of people didn't realize there was actually three divisions with the sheriff's office. And I explained it to them. I explained um, the number of calls that their town received. And it was, it was a, I really enjoyed doing it. I'm looking forward to doing this. I see. And then uh, my last question that I have for you is, um, were, did you view any of the, you know, EO203 sessions, like any of the three that the city of Cortland did, or maybe the one that the county sheriff, uh, you know, Mark, Mark Helms held? No, I did not. Okay. Okay. Um, well, thank you once again for the uh, interview, and we hope you have a great day, and we look forward to the event on the 15th.